Uh, today's message is one that God's been marinating in my heart all week. Um, I just needed to figure out, okay, how does he want me to share this uh, with you? And, ha- and had I correctly titled this message, in fact, you can put this underneath the title, I would, I would title it Living Humbly, Living Humbly. But you know why I didn't title it that? Because even Jesus sometimes, um, he, he, he believes in a little bit of reverse psychology. Um, because if I'd have titled that message, Living Humbly, most people would be like, well, Pastor, I don't want to hear that. Don't you know that I already have enough humble pie in my life? I don't need you to, to give me anything else to, to feel down about. Well, that's not what this message is about at all. It might be talking about how to get down, but it's not about bringing you down. What if I told you that the only way to get through things is to learn how to truly humble yourself before God despite anything. I can promise you that this message will um, possibly reverse some of your approaches to life, your perspective of life, but most of all, it'll get you headed towards God's best for your life. Today's message, I've entitled it, Empty Me, Empty Me, and, and, and that begins with me. That begins with me. Um, when, I, when I got down to pray for today's message, um, I stayed down just a little bit longer because how many of you know sometimes you don't, need, you don't even need a small portion of yourself in God's way? And so you have to ask him to just take over. Now, I'm going to remind you of some things that you probably already know, but you need to always know, and that's this. First of all, all Christ followers, we are called to empty ourselves. All Christ followers are called to empty ourselves themselves. This is where most professing Christians um, are stuck, okay? Um, Some are stuck because they're new believers and they don't know how to live as a believer, but some have been stuck ever since they became a believer because they did not know what the next right step was. This may sound elementary, listen, but in order to follow Christ, you've got to wholeheartedly follow him and you have to empty yourself. The scripture says this, that Jesus emptied himself. And then he sought God's will. Listen to what Jesus says to us all in Luke 9, 23. Jesus says, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must, I want you to hear those words, you must, it's not an option. It's not an elective. You must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. I can promise you this, following Christ is never something that happens by accident in your life. It is always an intentional surrender. What's Jesus saying here? He's saying the Christian life is not about your way, but it's giving up your way. And listen to me, and even maybe your, what you feel like are your rights so that you can live God's way. Just like Jesus gave up his way and let his heavenly father have his way in his life, we too are called to do the same. How can we call ourselves Christ's followers and not follow Christ's way? Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. I'm reading... In the New American Standard Version, it says, Have this attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, as he already existed in the form of God, he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Meaning this, he didn't didn't look at it as, okay, me and God, uh, we're equal. It also says, verse 7, But he emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant and being born in the likeness of men. And being found on appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. The only reason that Jesus was able to be obedient is because he was humble. The only way that God was able to have his way is because he kept surrendering to his way. John the Baptist said in John 3, 30, he said, he must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. Here, the reason we just keep sticking with this this, uh, God-given mission of loving, lifting, and leading people to Jesus is because it's always about Jesus. See, when the people see us, the church looks very, very ugly. That includes us pastors. But when the people see Christ, they are not misled. They see exactly who we're meant to exemplify. Listen, only those who are ready and willing to be emptied can this message change your heart and change your life and and your life impact. But secondly, true humility is the only way to experience God's best. True humility 
is the only way to experience Christ's best. Listen, Christ-like humility is the only way that you can experience God's plan and purpose for your life. If you want God's plans to unfold in your life, if you want things in, in 2021 and in 2022 to, to have greater impact and you to have greater fulfillment and peace and purpose in your life, you have to keep humbling yourself before God. Listen, pride says this, I'm a self-made man. I don't want to be a self-made man. I've seen myself. I've how many of you have watched yourself long enough to know that you don't want to follow yourself? Y'all, please somebody tell me, what's, what's been my word of the month? Somebody remembers it. Hillbilly Deluxe, two pickup trucks. <laughs> That's me. I'm like, Lord Jesus. You know why I'm so anxious to give Jesus the wheel? Because I'm tired of wrecking the vehicle. I'm tired of it. I've had that happen. Listen, I mean, I, I, I was told during COVID, by the way, people didn't like some of my online messages because I didn't talk near enough about my wife wanting to beat me, wanting to leave me, all those things. And um, uh, listen, how many of you fellas, it was just like me until you saw the, the taillights leaving out the front yard, you didn't quite find your knees? That's me. Had it happen a few different times. Listen, let me tell you, by the way, Things have to get pretty rough for that to happen because my wife's the same. So he'll build a deluxe two pickup trucks. He knows, oh my Lord, what have I done? And guess what? My wife can tell when what she's really looking for in, in any season or moment like that is for my attitude to change. She can tell when I'm just saying I'm sorry just to say I'm sorry versus, hey, I truly am broken over where this is over what I've said, over what I've done. Do you see the difference? Pride just bulks up and says, hey, you know what? I call the shots. I make things happen. Humility says, I'm nothing without the grace of God and the hope of God and the help of God. And I surrender everything to him. And by the way, humility and, and humbling yourself, it is not meant to be a single event. It is meant to be a continual lifestyle. Because let me tell you a couple of things that, of why you can't experience God's best if you don't walk in humility. You can't walk with God except humbling yourself before him. Micah 6, 8 says, No, old people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. It's been said that those who walk with God always reach their destination. You can't reach the destination. How can you get where God wants you to go without God taking you there? Can't happen. Can't happen. And so oftentimes I have to give God back the clipboard of my life and say, hey, all right, tired, uh, enough of me trying to act Christian. Again, I've tried that one too. Didn't, didn't, I kept acting like Craig. But when I let Christ take over, all of a sudden I find myself closer to God. You know why? Because I'm, I got my little hand in his big hand. Did you know you can't come closer to God without humility? James 4, 7 through 10 says, so humble yourselves before God, resist the devil. He will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you've done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord and then he will lift you up. Listen, it's not you that makes the difference. It's Christ that makes the difference. You have to get over yourself and that is something you have to learn to do over and over and over again. It says, let there be tears for what you've done. Listen, until you're broken over what breaks the heart of God, you're not really where you need to be. You've got to go, you know what? I want what God wants. I want what he says. I want to do what he says. I want to go where he says. And nothing else matters. That has to be, um, you have to get to where you're living for an audience of one. Most of us are living for an audience of many, and we don't even know it. Because we care more about what somebody thinks on, as my grandma said, I, had to, I have to say this. Y'all know I buried my 90-year-old grandmother this week. She's the one that said, um, uh, she came up to me after a service one Sunday. And I, this was at my previous church that I started. 
and she just darted straight up to me. And she had heard at that given time that I got on social media. And because I was one of those guys that said, man, I don't know why you ladies or anybody else is on that Facebook. And, uh, and so I got on it, and, and my grandma, she finds me at, uh, after the service, and she says, Craig, don't tell me you on that Facebook. <laughs> I said, no, ma'am, I'm not on. She said, do you understand? If you put pictures on Facebook, they travel all over space. And I, y'all, I'm serious. I raised my hand. I said, Grandma, I promise you I am not and I will not ever be on that Facebook. And by the way, God forgave me for using a little reverse psychology. I had to get Grandma off my back right then. But what was worse was when it was just a few months later and that same Grandma sends me a friend request on Facebook. <laughs> and I, I wasn't about to let her off the hook. I, I, I tagged her in a post. Said, y'all, the end is near. Grandma's on Facebook. But sometimes we're more worried about what people think on Facebook than how we look in God's book. And we've got to make sure that we're not getting the two confused. Anytime I feel like I, I'm, I'm um, not enough in my um, humility and, and walk with God and focus on that, I try to push those other things out the way. Because listen, sometimes discovering God's will is eliminating what's not so that you can focus on what is. Did you know this? You can't have a positive impact on other people if you're not humble. Nobody likes to hear anybody who's full of themselves. Nobody. How do I know that? My wife might have taught me that. My wife taught me that. Or maybe, maybe my, um, my son that's 20... My next to the oldest, Joel, when he was like 12 or 11, he said, Daddy, in order to, to, to get respect, you got to give respect. And i um, been parenting him differently ever since. And it, it actually works, by the way. Um, how many of you know sometimes God just needs to change your attitude, Amen. change your perspective? Because maybe you haven't figured this out. You can't change anybody else. You got to let God change you. Now, I want to move to what I'm going to say is the heartbeat of this message. This is something I believe will speak to your heart. Number three, God allows storms to help us get over ourselves. God allows storms to help us get over ourselves. Recently, I was, I was pondering the greatest pains and struggles I've been through in my life, and, and God spoke this very clear to my heart. And maybe you want to write this down. Maybe this is your story. He said, Craig, it was in those times... I was emptying you. I was emptying you. I was emptying you so that I could begin a new work in you. Because listen, sometimes God has to allow the old way of life to, to fade away. Sometimes God has to, to knock you down or allow things to knock you down so that you know who holds you up. Pride is often linked to our attempt to try and hide our, our greatest weaknesses. But guess what? Huge tragedy or crisis or, or heavy winds and storms do to you. They humble you. They expose you. I've been exposed a lot of times. COVID, it, it, it's exposing a lot of people out there. Because you know why? Because it, it just gets us all discombobulated. It gets us all to where we're like, man, you know, I can't take any more of this. The Apostle Paul, he talks about the gift of the thorn. Look at 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. It says, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and to keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness, so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take great pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Listen, God allows storms to help us get over ourselves and to hopefully get our full attention. I want you to write this down because this has changed my life ever since I heard it, and that's this. The greatest breakthroughs happen in you first. I can promise you this. Before there will be great change in your life, there will be great change in your heart. 
Satan loves it when, when we keep the mask on or when we feel like we need to keep the mask on so that we can hide all of our imperfections. Y'all know, those of you who've been with me a while, I oftentimes I admit my struggles to you because I found it's the only way that I can unleash the power of God in my life. I got nerve pain raging all through my face, have, have ever, since, ever since yesterday. Nothing I can control. I, I, I live with a thorn in my side every day I wake up. You know how if you got a certain thorn or a certain struggle or a certain what you look at as almost life hindrance, handicap, whatever, and you can't run away from it, especially if it's physical or emotional or mental or relational, you can't run away from it. And so, so ultimately you have to figure out how can I live beyond it? Listen, Satan wants to take the thorn and do nothing but jab you. Jesus wants to take the, the thorn and resurrect you. He wants it to, to prod you and push you in the right direction. Because listen, God does discipline those he loves. Sometimes, how many of you, you've had something happen in your life, and at that time, it felt like the worst thing in the world, but later you go, God used that mightily in my life. Amen. And you still might, might not be happy that it happened, but you recognize and you acknowledge that God does work all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them. See, the only way what you go through doesn't have purpose is for you not to allow it. Because you can either allow it to, to, to take you towards God's way or to absolutely crumble you, keep you in a corner, and swallow you up with fear. Listen, pride oftentimes leads us to want to wanna go, hey, you know what? Um, I got it all together. Well, I'm letting you understand. Listen, I can't pastor you if, it, if you got to have it all together because I'm miles away from that. I am miles away from it. And I finally learned because, because I got brought down so far in my life and in my struggle. You, how many of you, you know what I mean when I say that you're so, you've been so far down that your prayers were but whispers, you felt like you couldn't even pray? I mean, in fact, some of the most signature moments in my life was, I just remember it clear as day. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my dad before he's headed to go preach at his church on a Sunday morning. I'm, I'm laying in the bed that, that day, wasn't able to, it was a time when I wasn't even preaching here on a Sunday. And all I could say to my dad, and it broke my heart to have to say, I said, Dad, um, I can't even pray. I said, I can't even pray. I said, I need you, but I know I need prayer. Will you pray for me? Will you pray with me? And so sometimes when, this, when, this, when we have response time, sometimes you just need somebody to pray for you and pray with you because you can't get up on your own. Us holding everything together doesn't mean that we're stronger. It may mean that we're just full of pride. And Satan wants to keep us right there so that we crumble within. But fourthly, you need to know that humility, it is all about displaying Christ's likeness. Humility is all about displaying Christ's likeness in your life. It is about imitating Christ even if you feel like you want to do your own thing. Even if you feel like you have the right to be prideful about something. Listen, Jesus didn't have to be humble. You need to remember this. Jesus didn't have to be humble. He chose to be humble. Philippians 2, 3 through 5 says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ had. Well, what attitude was that? I'm going to empty myself. God, this moment, I'm going to empty myself. This day, I'm going to empty myself. Not just on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Listen, every day of Jesus' life, the way that he got where God wanted him to go and the way that he got to the cross for you and me is he just kept humbling himself. He kept dying to himself and living for God's will. Listen, humility is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign, though, of Jesus Christ living within you. 
You want people to see Christ in your life? Get over yourself. The more you get out of the way, the more God can have his way. The more you are decreased, the more he can increase. How many of you remember um, MySpace? I didn't even get it. Get into that conversation with you, Grandma, about MySpace. It was MySpace before Facebook. It must be something about space. Facebook might be the future, by the way. I don't know. We don't need more MySpace. We need to give God all the space. Amen. Listen, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit lives within you, which is what identifies you with Christ, they are reflections of you being empty of yourself and filled with Christ and led by Christ. Listen, Jesus told us, he showed us how to live humbly no matter what, how to live humbly towards others. That is something, listen, Christians need to learn how to live humbly towards one another. Not being like most people to where we, listen, some of the people who sit in the church house are the loudest, most obnoxious people outside of this house. And that while we might not want to hear that, I'm just telling you, sometimes, listen, we think that we're, being, we're, we're doing something for God when really we're trying to play God. Listen, Jesus showed us with his life how to no matter what keep humbling ourselves before God, how to no matter what keep seeking his will, not our will, how to turn the other cheek. How to love even our enemies. You know the greatest test of, of whether or not you're letting the Spirit lead you? How do you treat people who don't even like you? How do you love people who don't love you? You want Christ's love to speak loudly? Love anyway. There's not a person on the planet out here. I don't care what they've ever done, what they've ever said, or whatever, that I don't think to myself, God loves them, and so I love them. God forgives them, so I forgive them. God wants the best for them, so I want the absolute best for them. No strings attached. Listen, we are called to humble ourselves and to have this humble attitude of Christ. Listen, the attitude of Christ is not one that many display. And it is not displayed just by words, but by action. Listen, this is, this is a, a, a way of life. Listen, humility, it is not a reactive thing. I want you to write that down. It's not a reactive thing. It's a proactive thing because it is normal and natural to react to what people do or don't do. But it's a very proactive, intentional thing to surrender to Jesus. Listen, humility is forgiven even when you don't feel like it. Humility is being silent even when you don't feel like it. Humility is having a loving attitude even when you don't feel like it. It is not making that Facebook post even when you feel like it. Just because Facebook says, what are you thinking, doesn't mean you ought to share that. Maybe we'll make that report, but I think they're banking on, that's what, that's what Facebook's banking on, is that, that someone will take the bait and say what they really think. Listen, being obedient to God, even when you don't feel like it, is the true embodiment of humbling yourself. Colossians 3.12 says, since God shows you to be holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Ephesians 4, 30 through 32 says, and do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. We need to be very careful to claim that we are a Christian on the outside if we're living like hell. If we're just letting anything spew out of us. If it, and listen, this goes with our family, this goes with our friends, and this goes even with total strangers. Listen, there's been times in my life where my attitude just wasn't right. But listen, how many of you know if you'll let God deal with you, he will? You get on your face before him, you say, God, take over me. Listen, you need to pray God take over you before you pray God take over the situation. That's where we're living backwards. Listen, pride always wants its way. Humility says, God, have your way. I'm in it 
to win it. I'm, I'm walking your way no matter what. But fifthly, genuine humility. It requires frequent heart checks. Genuine humility requires frequent heart checks. The only way we can keep loving like Jesus, living like Jesus, is we have to keep being renewed in his word, in his will, and be led by his spirit. Because listen, sometimes it's just hard to be humble. Especially if you feel hurt. That's when it's your hardest. When you feel hurt, betrayed, or just flat mad, or you're sick and tired of things, period. Listen, even though Jesus went through many things and endured many things, he maintained his humility this way, by continuing to meet with God. Jesus had the first ever prayer meeting, by the way. But it wasn't a, a, just a Wednesday night thing. It was a constant thing, as often as necessary thing. Luke 5, 16 says, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. I used to always say this, and it's still true. Um, we all have to use our timeouts wisely. We all have to use our timeouts wisely. My wife, on many, many occasions, she knows that if I say, hey, I got to take a time out. I got to get away from everything and everyone so that I can seek the heart of God. That's not so I can fix the world. That's so that God can fix my life back into place. Usually that, rep you know what that normally represents in my life is, is, is I spend a little bit too much time um, on the interstate right, running wide open. And I got high mileage on rough roads and I need, I need to be still and know that he's God. Listen, you have to keep your heart in check or you can quickly get out of hand. I can, I can kneel today and completely unreal tomorrow. Amen? Anybody else unreal? Any of us can say things that we should not say or we do things that we should not do, but pride leads us. Listen, you got to make sure before you even step out of the bed that you're humbling yourself before God. When I got out of the bed this morning, and just as much so because I wanted the power of God to be unleashed today, I came straight out to bed, got straight on my knees. I don't do that every day. I don't do that every day. But how many of you know, sometimes you just know, it, it, when you're, the more depleted you are and the more sick and tired you are of being sick and tired, and the more you, you realize that you, there might be a little bit of you that needs to be emptied, you're much more motivated and prone to get on the side of your bed and say, Jesus, take it over. Especially when you've tried it your way a long time. Proverbs 11.2 says, pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. See, God can't lead you down a wise path if you keep telling him what to do instead of standing at attention and saying, hey, I pledge allegiance to the lamb. Lead me, take me, guide me. Again, the only way you're going to get where God wants you to go is for you to walk with God humbly. Psalm 139, 23 through 24 says, Search me, O God. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the paths of everlasting life. Do you know I'm not able to really be focused on other people's sins because I'm too busy trying to let God pull the weeds in my backyard? Again, I mean, listen, I'm such a hot mess. It's a full-time job just for me to get Craig out of the way. It's constant. It's constant. And if you're trying to walk with Christ, it's constant. Listen, you've got to keep letting God show you things through his surveillance that should be and what should not be. Number six, kneeling humbly before God is always the right step. Kneeling humbly before God is always the right step. Maybe you're in a situation that you're dealing with. You go, what, what should I do? Where, where do I go from here? What, what should I do right now? I can promise you this is the first thing, and that is God take full control of my life and carry me forward. Jesus calls us to humbly come to him, to seek him, to obey him, to lean on him, and to trust him to work all things out. Second like Chronicles 7.14 says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, again, it's starting with humbling yourself and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Listen, just like somebody could be singing the song, Here I Am to Worship, and yet their uh, mind is in Disney World, 
You can be praying to God and not listening to God. You can be turning to God for what you want and not be humbling yourself before God, asking what he wants. The difference is the other one's just a nursery rhyme. The other's a life-changing prayer because it's a declaration. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 7 says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Listen, you don't have to figure it out. I used to always spend a lot of my time as a minister trying to figure things out, trying to solve everybody's problems, trying to be Superman. And then I finally ran into the fact that I'm not Superman, but there is a Superman. And that if I'll just let him guide me, and if I'll trust him with all the things that I can't control and give him all my worries, give him all my life, he'll lead me. Listen, it says if you humble yourself before him, he will lift you up. Listen, you've got to wait on him. A lot of times we want everything to be fixed like that. And we just prayed. Sometimes you just have to keep, keep taking the next right step. The next right step is always, God, I give you control. God, I lay it all down before you. God, I'm not worried about what anybody else thinks, what anybody else sees. Lord, I'm concerned about what do you see. When you have integrity before God, by the way, you have, um, you have favor. You have the blessing of God. Your life is God approved. And, and how many of you know if God is for you, the scripture says, who could be against you? Nothing can stop you. Whether you're here or you live a million miles away, nothing can stop the presence of God in your life if you're a believer because he lives within you. Nothing can stop your success as long as the step that you're taking right now is seeking to be in his will and to do things his way. And last but not least, I want you to know that humbly following Jesus, it will lead to greater joy. Humbly following Jesus will lead to greater joy. A lot of times people, when, when they hear stuff like this, like, oh, you just need to humble yourself before God. You just need to walk with God. You just need to do whatever God wants you to do. You're focused on what you feel like that means things have to change in your life. Like, what, like, what is Jesus taking from you? Listen, anything Jesus calls you to give up is worth it because he's going to put 10 times more back in your life when it comes to peace, purpose, fulfillment, and a life worth living. Sometime later, I want you to look back and, 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 and make sure you study Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Read it all. But I want to read verses 1 and 2. Philippians 2, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Listen, it's been said before, you can write this down, that this is the key to joy. J-O-Y, it stands for Jesus, others, and yourself. You want to be focused and surrendered and following Jesus? You want to ask God, how can he show Jesus through you to others? And then you just want to let him take over your life, lead your life, make you more and more like him each and every day. I promise you this. I've never known anyone who surrendered everything to God and regretted it. I've never known anybody. Now, I've known a lot of people who said, well, preacher, I've been trying that theory that you mentioned on a Sunday. I done tried that thing for three days. And it ain't working, so I got to go back to what I was doing. No one said it would be easy. They just said it would be worth it. Isaiah 29, 19 says, The humble will be filled with fresh joy from the Lord. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, God, right now, Lord, um, may we humble ourselves before you, Lord. Lord, may we, may we operate, Lord, as if you're the only one in the room. Lord, as your arms are stretched out with love to hold us, to help us, and hope to give us. God, for that person who might just be holding on because, Lord, they, they, they just want to feel in control, Lord, but I know, Lord, personally, we must relinquish control to you. 
Lord, as we humble ourselves before you, you promise that you will lift us up. You will, you will help us rise above the things that we face. And Lord, you will be glorified no matter what we face. God, I pray, Lord, that each of us, Lord, would, would choose to humbly walk with you, God. I pray, Lord, right now, if there's any, anything in our lives, Lord, any sin that we are, are continually doing, Lord, that we know is not your will, a way that we're continually thinking, Lord, may we ask your forgiveness of that. Lord, you tell us if we, if we uh, Lord, ask for your forgiveness, you're faithful and just to forgive us. Lord, we thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you for, for the the many, many chances that you give us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that, that we can come boldly to your throne of grace right now, regardless of what we've done or not done. And Lord, we can experience your grace. And Lord, we can move forward with your joy. Focused on Jesus, others. And Lord, then ourselves, Lord, as you take us by the hand, guide us, Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. As you stand with us, this altar is open. I'm available here if you'd like to speak with me.